Hi folks, we're going to take a look at this example of uh, sketching a sinusoidal curve uh, from a description. Okay, so let's read the question. A passenger gets onto a Ferris wheel at its lowest point of one meter above the ground, and the diameter of the wheel is 17 meters. It takes 40 seconds for the passenger to go from the lowest to the highest point. We want uh, a sketch of the graph, and what this is modeling is the height of the passenger above the ground with respect to time. Okay, and we also want the uh, characteristics of this sinusoidal function. So let's start by listing what we mean by the characteristics of the sinusoidal function. Okay, so one thing that's important with any periodic function is the period. So we want to determine the period. Okay, we want to determine the maximum and the minimum. Okay, and then we know that once we have the maximum and minimum, we can determine the amplitude. And we can determine the equation of the axis. Okay, so these are the uh, five characteristics that we're looking for. Okay, and then these will help us draw a nice uh, graph for this scenario. Okay, another thing that's helpful for uh, determining all this information for a scenario like this is to actually draw a diagram of the situation. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. So here I've got the ground. Okay, and we have a Ferris wheel. So we've got a circle, okay, and we're told that the lowest point of the Ferris wheel is one meter off the ground, okay? So in terms of the height of a person on this Ferris wheel, clearly this is going to be the minimum height, okay? So right away, I'm going to go and input into my minimum category uh, the value of one. Now here, they don't actually give us the maximum directly, what they do is they give us the diameter of the Ferris wheel. We know that it's 17 meters. Okay, So here I can draw a diameter in many directions, but what I'm interested in is the diameter that's going to help me determine that maximum height. So this diameter here is 17 meters. Okay, That means that my maximum height is going to be 18 meters total. Okay. So here I can now go input my max as being 18. Okay. Now let's talk about the period here. This is where we have to be careful because it might be very, you know, it might be tempting to just say, ah, oh, the period is 40 seconds. That's really important to read the question carefully. It says it takes 40 seconds for the passenger to go from the lowest point to the highest point. Okay. But that does not include a whole period. A whole period would include going from the bottom to the top and then coming back to the initial position at the bottom. Okay, So what they've given us is only half the period to go from the minimum to the maximum, but then we've got the other half to go from the maximum back to the minimum. Okay, So you've got to be very careful here because the period is not 40, it's in fact 80 seconds. Okay. Now for the amplitude and the axis, we know we can use the max and the min uh, to determine uh, these two uh, values. So the amplitude, let's remember what the amplitude is. It's half the distance between the maximum and the minimum. Okay. So in fact, when we think about it physically, we can see that half the distance between the max and the min will just be the radius of the circle. Okay. But if we don't happen to notice that, we can calculate the amplitude by doing the max, which is 80. Uh, sorry, the max, excuse me, which is 18, okay, minus the min, divided by 2. Because the distance between max and min you find by subtracting, and since we want half that distance, we divide by 2. So this is 17 divided by 2, so that's 8.5, okay? So notice here, that's exactly the radius of this circle, since half of 17, which is the diameter, is 8.5. Okay. Now for the axis, remember that the axis is located between the max and the min. Okay. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the average between the max and the min. So in order to find the axis, it's y equals, and it's the max plus the min divided by 2. Okay. So that gives us y equals 18 plus 1, 19 divided by 2. That's 9.5. Okay. So now that we have all our basic information, we can set up a graph. 
Okay, so there's no negative numbers here. So I'm going to have my graph take up only the positive portion of both the x and y axes. Okay, I'm going to draw two periods of my graph. Okay, so now once we have that this is going to be time in seconds and this is going to be height in meters, now we have to choose our scale. Okay, so I want to draw two um, periods, so I'm going to split this up into one period of 80 seconds and then another period, another 80 seconds, so 160 in total. Okay. And remember what we said, when we're talking about a periodic function, the easiest thing to do is to separate it into four parts. So if you think of this person getting on uh, the ride at the very bottom, I'm going to think of this process as involving four parts. So first, I'm going to get to the middle portion, that's part one. Then I'm going to get to the maximum, that's part two. Then I'm going to go back down to the middle part. That's part three, and then I'm going to come back down to my minimum position. That's section four. Okay, so regardless of what my period is, I'm always going to separate it into four equal parts. Okay. Now let's take a look at my um, uh, at my uh, y-axis. So my minimum is one, and my maximum is eighteen. Okay, so I think going up by one might be a little difficult, so I'm going to go up by two. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is start plotting these four points for every period. Okay. Now it didn't tell it didn't tell me where to start my graph, but I would say it makes sense to start at the lowest point since that's the place where the person gets on the uh, ride. Okay. So at the beginning, at time equals zero, I'm one meter off the ground. Okay. So there's my uh, there's my first point. A quarter of the way through the period, I'm going to be at my axis. So in fact, it would be a good idea to draw a line. I'm going to draw a line here for my minimum point. It's going to have to be drawn a few times. I'm going to draw a line at my maximum to help me draw it nicely. And I'm also going to draw a line at the axis, so at 9.5. Okay. Because this represents the midpoint between the minimum and the maximum. So a quarter of the way through, I'm at my axis. Then midway through, I get to my maximum. Then back to the axis, back to my minimum. So this completes one cycle. Now I start again. I go back to the axis, then to the maximum, back to the axis, and then back down for my uh, for the end of my second cycle. And so now that I've got these points, again, I want to be careful to draw it as a sinusoidal function. So I can't just draw straight lines. I have to make it curvy. So I'm going to curve and make sure it looks like the sine function, okay, as best as I can. Okay, come back down, go back up, and then come back down again. Okay, and of course this could continue on, but I've decided to only draw two cycles Okay, so let's just do a recap here. Okay, number one is to list the characteristics that I'm going to use to solve the problem. Number two, if possible, draw a picture of the scenario that's being represented and use it to help you determine the different characteristics that you're looking for. Once you have them, you set up your graph with the correct scale on your x axis you're going to split up each period into four equal parts and for the y-axis it's a good idea to draw a dotted line across your minimum your maximum and your axis so you can plot the points more easily okay that's it